Woof woof! Hey guys, it's me Marcus, aka The Mad Dog, and thank you for tuning in. This video is going to be a little bit different. It's the video that I wish existed at the time when I was getting into comics. But that time YouTube didn't even exist, so I'm not really sure what video I'd expect. But one thing I've wanted to do with this channel is to kind of break down the barriers and allow people to find a comfortable way of getting into comics. It's why I did the Where to Start series, it's why I'm planning on doing Character 101s, because the comic community needs new people in it to survive, and we need to get over this gatekeeping mentality. It's not fair for us to expect everyone to know what's happened in all 678 issues of X-Men that have come so far or to have every single omnibus that's already been printed. So this video is going to be my comprehensive guide for people who may not know everything about comics but they really want to learn. We're going to go over stuff like the publishers, the terminology, the formats, the best ways to get into comics, release schedules and also some places where you can buy them. If you've been reading comics for a while then unfortunately this video may not be for you and hopefully this is just going to help a few people so that we can get some new voices into it. Hopefully more money can come into the comics industry and we can get even more on the buses. So first off I'm going to talk about the publishers and you've got your main two and you probably know who these are already but you've got DC Comics and you've got Marvel Comics. Now as much as I want people to get out of that gatekeeper mentality, one word of warning, do not ever cross over the characters between these two. Never ask anyone when Batman's going to turn up in the Avengers. And never ask anybody why Doctor Strange didn't save Superman from Doomsday. But those are your two main ones and the majority of characters that are in the popular culture are probably owned by those two. But there are other comics publishers that you may not even know about. So we've got stuff like like Image Comics, Boom Comics, IDW, Dark Horse, Oni Press. Dark Horse, for example, owns stuff like Hellboy and Sin City. IDW's got licenses to TV shows like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Transformers, and G.I. Joe. Boom Studios does create own stuff, but it's also got like Power Rangers. And Image Comics is probably the biggest independent publisher. It might actually be the best gateway if you haven't read any comics before. So you've got great superhero stories like Invincible, you've got Spawn, you've got Savage Dragon, but you also get more niche genres such as Criminal, Paper, the Girl, Saga, The Wicked and the Divine, and you've also got probably the biggest non superior comic of all time in The Walking Dead. It isn't essential to know all this stuff, but it just builds up your knowledge so that you can broaden your horizons. And one thing to also note is that smaller publishers can often be brought into the main two. So for example, a couple of years ago there was a publisher called Top Cow who did independent comics. They recently got brought by Image, so now a lot of that Top Cow material, such as Postal, is now being published by Image. And as well, sometimes the big two will have their own independent lines to keep it separate from the main universe. So for nearly 30 years, DC Comics had the Vertigo line, which is where they could do more mature content such as Transmetropolitan, Preacher and Sandman, but then recently that line got changed into DC Black Label. But before that, there was a branch of Image Comics called Wildstorm, but then Wildstorm got brought by Vertigo. So therefore by proxy, Wildstorm, which was originally an Image Comics line, ends up being a DC Comics line. So it's worth knowing these things so that you don't end up buying into a line that's maybe been brought by someone else and now you can't buy it for cheap, which is an issue that a few people had with the Fear Agent Library editions. Now we're going to get into some of the terminology because I know this can be a little bit difficult to understand. So you've got stuff like TPBs, you've got singles, you've got OHCs, you've got Omnis. That sounds like I was doing some kind of bad freestyle rap and I can promise you I wasn't. Because if I did a freestyle rap you know it'd be great. But the first one that you probably need to learn is singles. What we mean by singles is a single issue of a comic. So it's normally around 30 or so pages, it's got adverts on it and it'll come out if the schedule's right once a month. These are traditionally what you can normally only buy from your comic shop but it is the best way to get the story as it's coming out because after that you've got your TPBs which stands for trade paperback and this is a form of a collected edition. Now collected edition is the general term for any kind of group of single issues in a different format whether that be a paperback or a hardback and the first type of collected edition that normally comes out is a TPB. So they'll put it all in one and it'll look a lot better on your shelf and this tends to come out every six months or so depending on the release schedule of the single issues. If this sells really well it tends to get an OHC which stands for an oversized hardcover. So as you can see here this is a TPB, the trade paperback, and you can see it's quite thin but it looks really nice on your shelf and it'll collect six or so issues. Sometimes at the minute Marvel seems to be doing four issues at once but the OHC will tend to collect one, two or three of those trade paperbacks into an OHC. And the reason why it's called an oversized hardcover is because as you can see it's slightly bigger than the trade paperback so the art looks a lot better in this. As well it is thicker because it's containing more issues and it's also taller so if you like something for the art, it might actually be worth waiting for an OHC to come out. Then if the one is really enjoyed by a lot of people and there seems to be some kind of financial benefit in it, a company will now do something called an omnibus. Now an omnibus is a much thicker version of an OHC but it's the same trim as it more often than not. And what this will do is it will collect the majority of the run. Now this is Daredevil by Brian Michael Bendis and it's one of my favourite runs of all time. The entire series is contained in two trade paperbacks, whereas before it came out in five OHCs. So often it can save you a bit of money depending 
depending on the series that you're getting. And it will also save you some space if you're quite space conscious. Now this is something that you won't really see from Marvel Comics, but DC, and sometimes it tends to be um, Dark Horse who also do it, they will bring out an absolute edition. The benefit of one of these is, as you can see, it's much, much bigger than an omnibus. So you get that art in a much bigger style. It also comes with a really nice slipcase to protect the book, and you tend to get quite a few extras in this. This is Batman the Killing Joke, and the reason why this is special is because it's got the original colouring and the modern colouring of the book inside it. So if you ever hear somebody talk about an absolute edition, that's normally what they mean. Some of the other terminology that you might need to know about is when somebody says a run. So somebody might mention Brian Michael Bendis' run. What this just means is it's the entire series that that one writer did. So every single issue that they wrote is contained within that run. And other terminology that you might need to know if you're getting into the collected edition game is stuff like OOP and OOS. Now OOS means out of stock and what this means is that at various retailers such as maybe Read Comics, In Stock Trades or Amazon, they don't currently have the book in stock. This isn't really something to worry about so if a book's out of stock and you see it skyrocketing to enormous prices I wouldn't recommend getting it. The one that you should worry about is OOP which stands for out of print. So this means that the publisher whether it be Marvel, DC, Image or whoever no longer have any of that book in print. Of course there can always be a reprint but once it's officially in that OOP status things tend to end up becoming a whale. Now the term whale normally comes from that Moby Dick kind of sensibility so it's that thing that is kind of difficult to get. You're going to struggle to get it especially out in the wild because it is difficult to come by and if you do come by it somebody might be charging over cover price. All cover price refers to is the price that's on the back cover so the regular retail price. I myself tend to have a rule that I'd recommend for other people that I never pay over that cover price because then it always means that if there's going to be a reprint I'm not going to be too disappointed because I didn't pay more than what I'm likely to get it for if it does come back in print. The only other terminology that I think is really relevant is stuff like pre-order. This is mainly for collected editions but when the solicitations for a book come out which is something I'm going to get into later you can often pre-order a book whether it be from a comic shop or a retailer such as Amazon. That means that as soon as that book comes out you're going to get it as soon as possible and you're not really going to have to worry about it becoming a whale or out of print. Now I'm going to give you a little bit of a brief overview of the release schedule for a comic. So like I said the single issues should theoretically come out once a month. Sometimes it can often be delayed whether there's been an issue with the production or whether the artist just hasn't been up to scratch lately or maybe even the script wasn't completed in time or maybe there was an event that threw everything off course. But traditionally eight or so months after the series has started coming out that's when you will see that collected edition. Again it does entirely depend on how many issues need to come out before that collected edition can be commissioned but after that it's going to tend to be every six or so months that you're going to get a new volume of the trade paperback. Now an oversized hardcover tends to include anything between 10 to 15 or so issues so it's going to be about a year or so after the series starts that you're going to see that oversized hardcover come into print and from there if it's something that you're going to collect in those oversized hardcovers maybe it's a volume one you're looking at a year or so before every volume comes out and an omnibus if the series is lucky enough to get one tends to come out anywhere between two to five years after the series has ended. That's for modern runs. I know some of the older runs such as like the John Byrne stuff tends to just come out willy nilly but unfortunately as well there isn't really much rhyme or reason to when an omnibus comes out. Sometimes you can get massive fan series such as the Superior Spider-Man not getting an omnibus within a couple of years after it's been finished but then something like Donny Cates's Cosmic Universe is getting an omnibus whilst it's still ongoing. The way you can figure out what's coming out and when is waiting for the solicitations to come out. Now there is a hefty magazine that comes out every month called Previews. What this is going to do is show you every single issue, every collected edition, every OHC, Omnibus and Absolute that is due to come out in the coming months. This is primarily for comic shops because it helps them order and know exactly what they need to order for when. But it's also great as a consumer because you can see exactly what is going to come out in the following months. So by having a little look at these you can figure out which series you'd like. It often gives you like a brief overview of what's going to happen in that issue or series. So you can broaden your horizons there and it's got all the major comic companies so it's not like Marvel has a previews and then DC has a previews. Although admittedly you can maybe see that changing in the coming years just with what's happened with DC lately. I've already made a video on that I'm not going to confuse you more here. Now if you've never read a comic before it might be very daunting because there's so many characters, there's so many runs, there's so many publishers as well that it might be a bit confusing. But here's the thing, there's no wrong way to start reading comics. No matter what everybody says if there's a book that you are really interested in that you think you might enjoy and can get excited about that is the best book for you to start with because regardless of the character I think there's always going to be something that is worth reading for that character. So if you've only ever really watched the X-Men movies and that's how you want to get into comics why not figure out which X-Men book you can read first or watch my video or if you really want to get into DC comics I've got a video for that but at the same time there's other characters as well. So regardless of what other people think of the 
Captain Marvel film, if you watched it and you enjoyed it and you want to read one of her comics, why not? That's the best way to get into comics, by following the characters that you enjoy. I started that way, I started reading Superman Batman, I read Ultimate Spider-Man because those were the characters that I really liked. Now the final thing that I'm going to touch on in this video is the best place to buy comics. Now if you want to get into single issues, the best place for you is going to be a comic book shop. And as well, the comic book shop is the best way to broaden your horizons on what you're going to read. If you just talk to the people there, they're all fans already, they already have the favourite series so they're going to recommend things to you. When I was about 12 or so, this was when I really started properly talking to the people who owned my local comic shop and he recommended Preacher, he recommended Transmetropolitan and he recommended a ton of other stuff that I still love now. And as well, that's just a side tip so that you should just keep talking to people who enjoy comics. They will always want to recommend stuff to you, they will always feel like you need to read this book to properly say that you're a comic fan. I've been doing this 10 years and there's still books that people tell me that I need to read or else I can't properly say that I like the hobby. They do mean that as a joke but if anybody ever says that seriously to you just don't pay any attention to it. But if you're in the UK or the EU the best place for you to buy comics is going to be stuff like Books Etc, Book Depository, Speedy Hen, Amazon, Read Comics or Forbidden Planet. If you're in the US or Canada, admittedly I don't know too many for Canada but you've got stuff like Amazon, you've got in stock trades, you've got Midtown Comics, you've got discount comic book service and cheap graphic novels. There's also one in the EU that I forgot to mention which is cheap-comics.com and it isn't really one price per book so you're best checking between them just to check that you're getting the best price. As well I do something called Whale Watch, I'm just going to plug it here, where each month I talk about a few books that I think might be going out of print or might be coming a whale or books that you can save a lot of money on. I'd recommend checking that out, I also recommend a lot of places that you can buy on there so I'd recommend checking that out. I know it's a bit of a cheap plug but if it helps you then it was worth it. But that's all the information that I've got for you on this video and I want to kind of finish this with a message because like I said at the beginning there are a lot of gatekeepers when it comes to comics. There's people that will make you feel bad if you haven't read a certain thing or if you don't know who a certain character is or if you've never heard about a certain storyline. Who cares? Are they the one who's making you read the book? If it's something that you aren't going to enjoy or maybe you've read it and you don't enjoy it, that's fine. That's your opinion. At the end of the day I haven't spent however much I've spent on these books just to appease a few people. It's because these are the stories I enjoy. I've sold series in the past that people have said are the greatest ever because I just don't really rate them. So if there's one thing you can learn from this beginner's guide to comics, it's don't be afraid to be a beginner. Don't be afraid to read something and not enjoy it. Don't be afraid to say that you don't like something that's got a ton of hype. I'm probably going to get people unsubscribing but I'm not a massive fan of Matt Fraction's Hawkeye and everybody says that's the greatest series of the past decade and I just don't agree with it. But you know what? I don't really care because your comics journey is individual. The series you like are going to be personal to you. You shouldn't be afraid to not like something because you feel like you won't be a part of the community because that's not really the case. There's a community of course but yeah the journey should be individual to you and hopefully some of these tips have helped you along that journey. I really hope that they have and I haven't missed anything out too major. If I have please leave it in the comment section below. I just wanted to make a video that I thought would be beneficial to people who are maybe scared of getting into comics or just don't have a clue where they'd begin. If that's you and you like this video please give it a thumbs up and if you didn't like this video why did you get this far? Please subscribe if you haven't already and click that bell notification. I do quite an array of content so that it's great for new readers and also for people who've maybe been reading for years. Please check out some of my links and make sure that I'm posting comic content all the time but more than anything just make sure that you stay safe, keep reading and keep barking all you mad dogs and I'll see you at the next video.